All right, here's a quick video of what I've been working on, which is a remote control coolant nozzle. So this is the first functional prototype. Um, the machining still needs work. This turret is not the proper size. It's gonna be the same diameter as the body. It's also gonna have a significantly larger nozzle uh, once it goes into more of the production phase. So uh, it's got a control panel here. <clears throat> On the basic version, you can make all your wiring connections here at this uh, pluggable screw terminal. And basically you can uh, control the angle of the nozzle remotely, is the idea. So the device will also keep track of the last saved position for the current tool number. So basically if we were to, let's say load, well this is tool 12, so if we turn the coolant on, it's not going to be probably pointing anywhere near where we need it, but if we just uh, select tool 12 on the control, uh, it remembers the last position that I had it set. So if we shut the coolant off, and then we change to tool 11, We can manually, uh, we'll turn the coolant on so you see it's not, not in a good place. Uh, we can manually set the tool number to 11 and it remembers that that's where I had it last. And of course, you can tweak the position if you wanted to like that. And it will then save whatever your new position is for that tool. So that's basically how the operation works. Now this tool following, eventually uh, I want to have that uh, be automatic. So it's going to automatically follow the machine as it changes tools, which for a carousel tile, uh, style uh, ETC like this is not, not a big problem. Uh, on this, essentially what you'd be looking at right now is the, the basic version. And the basic version is going to have a extra pin in this connector, which is called a pulse pin. So I'm going to develop a basically a protocol for counting the number of pulses, let's say within one second, to determine what the tool number is. So to utilize that in your control, you'd need to be able to have control over a digital output pin that you can pulse the number of times that's equal to the tool number um, in maybe in your tool change macro or however you'd want to do that. But on a machine like this one, um, the Pro version will have an extra box exactly the same size as this that'll live in the back of the machine and it will have connections for all sorts of things like RS-232 to listen for messages, serial messages out of the control. Uh, but also simply, it's going to have uh, magazine clockwise and counterclockwise pins. Um, that's how this controller communicates, and most controllers communicate with a, a umbrella type uh, tool changer like this one. So it's going to monitor those pins uh, in order to keep track of the, the current tool number. So the there's going to be lots of things that you'll be able to set in here, but um, down in here you have the ability to set the number of tools. So this is a 12 tool ATC, so I'm, I would leave that set to 12. Uh, and then the number of nozzles as well. So on the Pro version, you can have two of these nozzles run by this one unit. So if we adjust this to say two, you'll see that the no nozzle two window will appear and it would be giving you the angle information for uh, nozzle 2. So if you're running dual nozzle, right now you can see nozzle 1 is in a green box. That means that's the one that you can adjust the position of. 
If you wanted to adjust nozzle 2, you just push down on the button and you can see nozzle 2 now is in the green box. Basically, whatever's in the green box is what you have control over with the knob. Uh, at any point inside here, if you want to back out, you can press this back button and it'll bring you back to always to nozzle 1. So, I'll go back and I'm going to change this back to 1 and then back out. So, uh, eventually, some of these options in here, it's going to be, uh, you know, kind of like the, the P, cool, wiggle, uh, you know, some kind of oscillating motion that you can set and set the amplitude of. And there, on the Pro version, there may end up being some extra features. There's auxiliary outputs uh, on the Pro version, and you will be able to have uh, control over MOSFETs that will output to uh, various devices like let's say one of them might be air blast where you can set air off, air on, continuous or set a duty cycle for the air blast so every out of every three seconds how many seconds is the air on uh, in order to pulse it if you're not wanting to run your compressor too much. But anyway that's the, the machining on this case is pretty poor it was my second try to make everything fit um, I hope to make that look a lot better. If you're going to participate in the beta group, those are the people that I need to install these on their machines uh, and uh, basically give me feedback on how it's working with your machine and how I can adjust the interface to, uh, to better work with whatever you might be trying to do with it. I can't think of all the scenarios that you guys might have um, here in my own shop. So that's the idea. Basically, I think for the beta group, I'm giving everyone the pro version for the cost of a basic version, which I think is $4.99. And uh, the firmware in this thing is really easy to update for that reason. Uh, you can see there's a micro USB port here. Plug it into your computer, uh, literally, Pretty much just drag the firmware file onto, it'll show up as a disk drive. You just drag it onto that drive and it's done, it's programmed. So it's really easy, it'll be really easy to stay up to date with the changes. Uh, obviously I hope to refine the, the user interface a bit and, and at least make it prettier, uh, a little more appealing. And any functional changes that might come about, it's really simple to, to take advantage of it. This, this is a pluggable block. So you just slide it out and then walk over to your computer, plug it in. There will be a plastic um, cap on here uh, with machined openings for the connector. This Ethernet jack you can see in the back, that's for the Pro version. The Pro version will just have an Ethernet cable that connects the display unit to what I call the inputs board in the back. So it's a nice, clean... Um, installation compared to you know having all your wiring at the display right at the display so yeah the unit itself is going to be anodized I've never used the people that I'm going to use um, before I have no idea how they're gonna turn out uh, you can kind of get a general sense of the machining um, you know you're they're not gonna get tumbled you're gonna see some machining marks and and things like that but I'm doing my best to make it um, you know appealing uh, it's everything's going to be functional and to dimension and everything but I'm I am trying to, to think about the aesthetics of it and again this this ugly turret uh, is not going to be the final version it'll have a, a larger one and a larger nozzle um, you can see the case is drilled and tapped for the magnetic bar to either attach on this side or on that side so you can have the unit face whatever way you like. You can open the unit and reclock the shaft to the servo in case you you know you want the nozzle pointed the other way and you want it to run reverse. Uh, I'm trying to make it fairly universal. On the back of the device it's threaded for uh, 3 8 NPT for a push to connect like for my coolant hose. And it's also going to have a, a metal connector, a metal waterproof connector on the back. My this prototype doesn't. It was it was machined and threaded for a NEMA gland, 
and um, that's not how I'm going to do it. It's going to have a nice, nice metal connector you can undo to take the unit out of the machine. And um, yeah, I don't know what else to to think to tell you. Uh, I guess one thing right off the bat, it, it is not compatible with high pressure coolant. So you know, if you're running 100 psi or more. Um, this guy at the moment is not for you. There are other systems that are specifically designed for that. One of the big reasons, it's got a really nice mechanical pump uh, seal inside of it to, to direct the coolant into the rotating shaft, but um, the way I designed it with these turret jets is uh, when the coolant is spraying, if you have like 100 psi, it's going to create a torsional effect on the shaft and it will strain and potentially overcome the servo, I'm not sure, but at any rate, not high pressure coolant uh, compatible. So the idea is kind of machines in this class, you've got a, you've got a flood coolant system, but it's, you know, not, not the most powerful thing in the world. And we have some people already in the beta group with some larger machines like Alcuma, um, some larger Haas machines. Um, so we'll be able to get a feel for how it works with with uh, better coolant pressure than I have. I've got like literally probably the minimum you can have with with a flood coolant system. So um, this was kind of my target area. So yeah, that's all I can think of to say for now. But I just wanted to give a quick video to to basically give a general idea of. Uh, how this is shaping up and it is time for people who want to be involved with the beta program to head over to the website and uh, essentially sign up by purchasing a beta unit. So like I said, uh, or like it says on the website, you know, the guaranteed functionality right now is that it will manually, you can manually control the tools, it remembers all their positions and you can at this point manually update the current tool number and the other features like uh, the pro features like the magazine following and stuff like that is um, untested at the moment and I, I hope to get to that this weekend and this pulse feature as well for the for the um, basic version I haven't tested it either but I don't think I don't think there will be any issue with that. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, coming up with the protocol on the controller end. So the thought there is like Tormox, um, you know, anybody w running Mach 3 or Mach 4, uh, that was the, the thought for them to be able to, you know, you change tools in, the, in Mach 3, uh, you know, this guy will automatically follow up and move the nozzle to the correct position. So Linux CNC, we have someone who's signed up with that. Um, I believe we have somebody with a Tormach with Pathpilot as well who's signing up. So, you know, as this, as these things get tested or refined or fixed as necessary, they'll be released for everyone through firmware, basically. Um, and so on, on the Pro version two that you'll get in the, the uh, beta group there is uh, the the board is designed to listen to RS 232 422 and 485 and those are not tested yet um, so as those become tested and I modify the firmware that box will have its own programming just as easy as this one but it'll have its own dedicated processor for handling basically all the input signals, all those communication protocols and things like that. And I guess that's another thing I should mention. This guy as well, uh, through the USB port and also the inputs board on the Pro version, if you plug in a USB cable, it will also monitor for, you know, like a virtual serial connection over your computer. That's what the, the board will show up as. Uh, so you can send it serial messages from a PC as well if that for whatever reason is easier for you or meets your requirements it will have that have that capability as well but like I said for now that's not guaranteed it's not tested the hardware is there I just need to get around to either trying it on my machine or getting 
someone else to try it on a different machine. So, that this was meant to be a super short video, but it ended up being kind of long. But I hope it answers most, most people's questions about where this is headed. And yeah, I mean, it's exciting to be at the point now where everyone is signing up and uh, seeing where this thing goes, basically. So, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, get a hold of me if, if you have any questions, or if you want to be part of the beta group, then it's, it's time to sign up. Alright, talk to you later. Bye.